You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Neri here from Drake Queen Gaming. As you can see, I am starting a new game, a place to call home. So, this is basically a uh God, how do I describe this? So, from its uh, itch.io page, it says that it is a take on a modern World War II tale. So, if World War, I guess World War III, honestly. Um, or, I, I guess, technology of World War II, but taking place in modern times? I don't know. I'm very interested to see where this goes. Uh, this is probably going to be dealing with some pretty sensitive topics, such as PTSD, death, trauma, stuff like that. I mean, this is about war and all. So, anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy. This is a new playthrough of A Place to Call Home. Uh, maybe, there we go, a little bit, just a little bit, okay, start, alright, jump to your newest update, uh, nah, okay, alright, alarm chain, you're up, coward, ooh, this country has no place for filth like you, get away from here, damn confederates, hmm, What did I do wrong? Because of you, our nation is dead. The land of the free, land of delusions. There's nothing left for us. Voices scatter inside my head. Whispers and screams fly like sirens, screeching and abruptly changing in volume. Its unearthly sounds have me wanting to pull my arm up, but there was stillness in me. My arms trembled as the tightness around my chest strengthened. I struggled, still able to curl my toes. I called with a voiceless help. I drowned and drifted deeper into the abyss. There was no air. I wasn't able to breathe. But I was alive. I searched for an exit, looking endlessly into the dark infinity. But I found nothing. I lost hope and let myself be swallowed by the maw of the unrelenting. horror vibe going on. Thus was born the treaty that ended the dispute. This mark of peace has led the nation anew, along with the guidance of the Almighty and a great leader. Though the masses disheartened and in despair had begun to spring hope within their hearts and lift the new era, blossoming with prosperity and unity. All with the deepest gratitude to the soldiers and especially to our leaders that guided us to this bright future. Now, for a word by... Fernamandi. Hmm, this is interesting. Where's that word? Hello? Is this mic on? Ahem! <clears throat> I know there is hope. There is salvation. It is always there, waiting for us to reach out and grab it by the hand. It waits for us. It always does. And to my family, my three brothers, I want them to also be in this future. All of us together, living our lives to the fullest. A warm sensation held me by the arm. From the touch I felt from the touch I felt peace. Nothing else but the serene voice in my head. It's not fair, I know. That is a big boy. Damn. Who But we shouldn't keep thinking about it, right? Being sad is not fun after all. Right? L right, Ludus? Ooh, nice render. That could also just be a picture <laughs> with a filter on it. Either way, beautiful area. <sighs> ah! Holy shit, dude, don't do that to me. I only touched your arm. H who, who was that? The voice in my dream sounds a lot different from the rest. I've definitely heard that voice before, though I can't remember where. With blurry eyes, I looked at the black thing the wolf was holding. The sounds were actually coming from his phone. I calm myself down with a few deep breaths. You okay? You were shifting around. Looked like you were going to pee in the bed for a minute there, so I tried to wake you up. He rubbed my back softly. Well, it worked. Ugh. I rubbed my cheeks. Had a nightmare. Bad dream, huh? Mm-hmm. I still feel kind of disoriented. Oh? The wolf pulled the sheet off me, exposing me in my underwear, and proceeded to examine under my legs. What are you doing? 
Mm, just checking. He turns back to his phone. Huh. I stared at him. He bats an eye a few times, shifting his look to an annoyed gaze. What? Nothing. You're kind of creeping me out. You look like you're like you look like you're possessed. Blah. You look at me like you're possessed or something. Uh. Uh. What are you watching? I leaned to his side and saw a white tiger light up on his phone screen. He looked young and stout, gleefully giving a speech with a bold smile. He looked almost my age. The wolf had a weary face. It was something new and something I had not grown accustomed to. He was staring at a memory. He stared at a face long gone, and his eyes glowed the gray shade of longing. I continued to stare at him, although with the furrowed brows, his eyes shone in the small light that seeped through the window. I was mesmerized at the dark blue orbs, like water that had been crystallized and elegantly molded into opals. His glance stoically moved back and forth from his phone to mine. He gently smiled inside. Completely breaking his act, he chuckled. Go make breakfast, you klutz. You're not so different yourself, you know. Hembo. I flicked his ear and sprung up off the bed as I ran towards the living room. <sighs> oh! Damn, that's a nice living room. Blindly, run blindly running in glee, I bumped myself into a hard, hairy surface, and its arms catch me by the waist before I land on the, onto the hard floor. Oh, oh, wow, this place is filled with dudes. Nice. Ah! Careful. Sorry. Morning, Leo. What's the rush? Come back here! Elf's voice echoed in the living room. Steps stump on the wooden floor, and it abruptly comes to a halt as he stumbles in front of the lion. Good morning, bro. Isn't it a bit too early for charades? The lion stared. He flicked my ear. Uh, how's sleep? It was great. Lou just turned me into a body pillow again, though. I did. I did. How about you? Shouldn't have stayed up late binge reading a book. I still feel sleepy. Anyway, what shall we all have for breakfast? Ooh, ooh! <laughs> the wolf beamed, his ears pointing upwards. Pancakes! Hmm, pancakes, huh? Think you can handle that, kid? Easy stuff. Alright then, pancakes it is. Okay. I'm gonna get some more shut eye if you two boys don't mind. Hmm. Go ahead. Kid. The lion slid his arms around my waist. He gives me a crushing hug. Ah! Ha <laughs> ha! I'm gonna watch some TV for a while. You gonna start cooking? Mm-hmm. Better start sooner. Cake cakes take a bit more time to make. Alright then. Hmm. Man, these are some beefy characters. Mm, it's a long way forward, so trust in me. Na 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 na. Should really memorize that more. Hey ya! The wolf popped behind the wall, drifting away in solace of my own thoughts. I almost forgot to flip the cake. Luckily enough, I was just in time. I was just in time as the side had turned golden brown. Did you make sure to put in lots of cream in the mix? Yeah. Good, good. The wolf stared at the sizzling pan while resting his head on my shoulder. Flip it! Flip it! It'll burn! He gripped my shoulders and stuck, and stuck the side of his face on mine. Ah! If you didn't do it faster, you could have slightly burnt it! Hmm? He closely watched the movements of my ladle, every sway of my hand. With each flip of the pancake that somersaulted in the air, his blue eyes keenly traced like an eagle down its prey. You know, you could just watch without tearing my fur off. I can't help it. The way you make those pancakes fly is like watching a skydiver jump off a plane. Really? That level of harrowing for you, huh? Oh, well, watch this then. Swiftly moving the pan, I tossed the pancakes high into the air. At each hop of the slice, the wolf would gasp and shout. Ah! I finished the performance with one last flip. The slice lands back perfectly on the pan. Glancing behind me, I saw the wolf gaping in awe. Holy crap! Teach me! Well, a magician never reveals his tricks. I smirked and turned back to the pan, secretly shedding a tear from all from all the oil burns. 
Does Leo have any plans today? Mmm. Plans? Mm-hmm. He'll go to work like usual. Why? Nothing. I was maybe considering if you try helping him out. Wait, since when do you get to decide on those things? Just now. <laughs> You're not making any sense. Blood? Yeah? You keep spacing out. Sorry. I just asked you if you found my blue shirt in the laundry. No, sorry. Maybe you flushed it in the toilet or something. <laughs> you feeling okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I just... I keep on reminding myself about that dream earlier. I think it'll be good to bring it up now. Hey, uh... Have you ever had someone, um... Talked to you in a dream before? No. Why? Wait. Now that I think about it, I do remember talking to someone a few days back. I was talking to a banana. What? I'm being serious. I am. Oh. I mean, when I meant talking to someone, I meant like a person? Like a real guy in real life. You believe about the things about. You believe about the things that. Uh, what is that? You believe about the things about people in dreams, right? Hmm. Not really. I'm not really a fan of superstition. Those are just beliefs anyway. Not like they're proven or something. Is that what's been bothering you? Yeah. I've been thinking about it a lot. You must have hit your head while sleeping. Just kidding. I'll go set the table. What was your dream about anyway? It was pretty intense. Oh? Yeah, there was the screaming and all that. I think I dripped the sounds coming from your phone. The video I was playing? Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, screaming and all that. But after a while, though, I heard the, his I heard his voice. Voice? Whose voice? Um... Your brother's voice? Fern? Hmm... What? What did he say? I can't really remember much, but I did remember him say something about not being sad and all that. Then what? Then he called my name? He did? He did. Hm, that was just a dream, right? It's probably just something with our brains remembering voices. He couldn't have possibly talked to you. He couldn't have. Right? It never pleased the wolf whenever he hears that name, Fern. Even talking about him is a whole can of worms, per se. It was his scar that he never seemed to heal. Answer me. If he did... Why hasn't he talked to me, then? I should be the one he's talking to. He viciously gripped my shoulder. Ow! He stepped back. Ah! I... I'm sorry. I rubbed singing... I rubbed the singing pain. Hey, it's fine. I shouldn't have brought this up in the first place. I pieced a smile. Sorry. He stared at the floor. I pulled him in for a hug. Pat my back, please. I gently pat his back. You're such a baby. Heh. <laughs> Tell me everything's okay. Everything's A-OK. -okay. Better? Better. By the way, that pancake is burning. Just leave it burn. Sometimes I can, I mean, I enjoy a burnt... Uh, I like the seared edges of pancakes. I think that's pretty good. I like making kind of like a crust on it. Anyway, the wolf set up the plates and cutlery while I carefully plated the pancakes elegantly into many leaning towers. We then sat down and eagerly waited for the lion. I looked at the wolf that was staring at empty space. You okay? Yeah, I'll be all right. Really? Mm-hmm. Just gotta eat this all out. <laughs> hmm. A turn of phrase that is. He grinned. I smiled back. The front door of Leo's room squeaked, and immediately we recognized who it was just from the clattering claws of his footsteps. 
The lion entered with dis with disheveled, untied hair. Pancakes! Mmm, you did a great job with these, kid. They look fancy enough to be in a restaurant. Hurry up, you geezer! God, this energy since there this early morning. The lion grunted as he sat down, fixing his hair into a ponytail. Some strands escaped the tie and poked out like small spikes. The color of his hair almost had the same shade almost had the same shade as the maple syrup the wolf flushed down the wolf flushed down on his stack of pancakes. Hmm. Yo, watch me! He poked a huge piece of soaked and glossy syrup and shoved it into his mouth. His cheeks swelled like a balloon. Amazingly, he gulped the whole thing down. Don't do that! That's how you choke it, doofus! Impressive, huh? Am I supposed to be impressed by your gag reflex? <laughs> we continued to dig into our own sweet meal peacefully. Though, I found my own gaze locked onto the bulging muscles of the lion. Leo is thick in curves. He's in his late 40s, and he doesn't even work out much. Ah, he's a daddy. Oh god, what the fuck? No! Oh god, my weakness! Oh, I love the dad types. But the muscles and the small details on his forearm are intricately sculpted, showing veins and even smaller muscles each time he moved to poke his breakfast. Leo. Hmm? Phil offered to help you on work. Well, that's new. The wolf turned to me, pausing with widened eyes, his stuffed face dripping with syrup. Man, that is a beautiful home. Yeah, he said he'd take care of the sales. The wolf turned to him with furrowed brows. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Nodding in agreement. Huh. I knew it's too good to be true. I'm beginning to think general stupidity is an ailment. <laughs> I've also heard it's contagious. Hmph. <laughs> We continued our idle chat. Finishing my, my meal first, I rested an elbow on the table and stared at the two. I flitched around, pinching the cloth that itched, my, that itched into my armpit. You alright? Yeah, this shirt's just too tight, I guess. Well, that's only that's well, that's the only perfectly fit for your size. Mm-hmm. I'm also not used to the fact that you used to fit in this thing. It's way smaller compared to the giant you are now. I have no clothes that fit you too, sadly. I know. I tried one of your tank tops and it came out as a woman's nightgown. You should really cut down on your height, Leo. Alright, but if I do, you should also contribute your mass to Ludo's, to Ludo's since he's lacking some. Really? You guys are... He's like What? Well, actually, that's yeah, a fair point. I haven't actually seen uh, all of Ludus yet, but from the proportions of his neck muscles, I say he's probably a pretty giant dude himself. I'll... Ugh. Leo was the kind that towered. He was taller than the both of us, me and the wolf, easily surpassing us by a whopping 6'8". But that also came with, his came with his pride as the head of the house. Our guardian lion, in a sense. Filio calls him Lo, for reasons I do not know. Some case that he calls me... Same case that he calls me Lud, and that seemed to stick with him. I also wasn't used to that name at first, as I never had anyone call me by that name before. My tail used to spark and send shivers down to my squeezing butt whenever I heard it. Now I can at least say that the only sensation that, rem that remained to the ringing of my name was a gentle pinch in the ass cheek. <laughs> what? I wonder if I could find some jobs in the city. I'd like to buy some new clothes. Most of this guy's shirts are too baggy. I thumbed at the wolf. I can always cut his clothes down to size for you. There's a pair of scissors in the drawer. Don't you dare touch my shirts, Lo. About jobs, you know any vacancies, Leo? Hmm? His eyes turned back to me from empty space. What? Oh, uh... You have any skills you're proficient at? Other than your cooking, of course. Well, I know how to hunt. I also have some basic survival skills. That's mostly it. Don't you guys live in, like, a big city? What's the point of hunting in a giant city? Hmm. How about you apply at a restaurant as a cook? He needs a degree for that, I think. And Ludus hasn't really finished. Hmm. I only finished middle school. That's fine. I mean, in today's age, we're basically starting from the ground up, so jobs aren't too important. Unless you want to be a real chef or something. Lo also never went to college, so that's also fine if you want to start a business. Um... Leo rubs his chin. Are you good with numbers? I think I can multiply and divide, just the simple stuff. Yeah, Lo can barely multiply, so you could, so you could do his stats for him. Leo stared. <laughs> I... 
did hire an accountant. I'm good at communicating, though. Talking is kind of my specialty. Hmm, how about giving my business a try, then? What? That's too much! Just selling the ice cream in the park, I mean. Handing out the cones and shouting stuff about ice cream. Nothing too heavy. I thought... I thought he'd be managing the entire business. Maybe if he knows what he's capable enough. Maybe maybe if he shows that he's capable enough, I'll consider it. Whoa, really? Maybe I'll consider it. How about you go with me at the park later for some experience selling stuff? That'd be great! Hmm. <laughs> I don't think he'd be managing his business right off the bat. That's kind of a huge step. I continued to wander off into my own headspace. Just then, my eyes caught, caught the glimpse of the wolf folding two whole pieces of paint cake into his mouth, forcing it down his throat. I watched him struggle to push it down. Oh, shit. Uh. Why would you do... Why would you do this? Why would you do this? That's some talent. Uh. Uh. I'm gonna pause it right there. It seems like this is a good place to pause it before, you know... I have to apply the Heimlich maneuver. Although, I'm pretty sure this guy, from the force of one of his punches, could probably just dislodge it himself. But anyway, guys. Ooh. Man, this is a new series we're doing. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it's certainly very interesting so far. I like the characters and their, their, their banter with each other. It's very playful. It's very cute. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!